All right, you're listening to theshimmyshow.com. Welcome back to the show, folks. I'm Shimmy, in case you don't know. And today I got a real weird one for you guys, an obscure topic. As always, I want to talk about older women and underage teenage boys and possibly even preteen boys. Right. Some weird shit, right? But really, really not, now that I think about it, you know? In society here, we're often told that men are perverts, you know, men are uh, sexually deviant, we're looked down and frowned upon, and uh, how you say, uh, basically castrated, shamed, cajoled, and imprisoned for looking at, talking about, interacting with, or trying to hook up with underage, meaning under 18 year old girls, right? But what about the inverse of that? What about when older women go and fuck teenage boys and even preteen or tween boys, not quite 18 years old yet, you know? And, uh, you know, why is it that this is okay? Why is it that every time I open up the local newspaper here, right, uh, in Florida, Florida is famous for doing these, uh, what do they call them, kitty porn, child, child, child internet porn stings or whatever. And every day on the newspaper, there was just one yesterday where they have like some bust where there's like 50 or 60 guys all with mug shots on the front page of the paper saying these guys had uh, underage porn on their computer or they had images of, you know, teenage girls or whatever on their phone or some shit. There was a story recently in Miami, some older Cuban guy takes his phone to a uh, Metro PCS store for whatever reason. And the store worker girl ends up calling the police on the guy because she sees some images on his phone of like, you know, some teenage porn or whatever, or some underage, underage fucking or some shit going on on the guy's phone. And the guy, they, he's, he's arrested and facing fucking many years in jail, whatever, whatever. I always follow these cases or whatever, and, but by the looks of things, most of these things, like 99% of them are never, ever, ever fully prosecuted. They make some kind of a deal with the fucking county, state, DA or some shit, and uh, they end up being in some sex, sex offender program or some shit, which means more money for the state, which means the guy can't... Uh, he can't live in a normal neighborhood. He can't live near a school district or around children or whatever. And I just so happened to have my home. I purchased a home in Florida, right? A couple years ago, another home. And my next door neighbor, there was a rumor on my block that my next door neighbor, who no longer lives there now, someone else bought the house now. There was a rumor on the block that my next door neighbor, it was a single guy who rode a motorcycle or whatever, and uh, there's a rumor that he was convicted of child pornography possession or whatever, which means this doesn't mean that he had like girls in his house or anything like that. That just means that they found pictures or possibly videos or something on his computer. Not even that he made himself, but that he probably downloaded it from some fucking page or whatever. And it was up to someone else's discretion that these girls were underage or whatever. Now, this guy was very, very reclusive, you know. I'm a pretty reclusive guy myself too. You know, I work out, I run the neighborhood and shit like that. But, uh, you know, I, I don't have the problems this guy have. This guy, he would only go out. It was so weird. Like he was so reclusive. He would only go out when it was raining on his motorcycle <laughs> and he'd have a fucking helmet on. You know, I, I used to jokingly joke with my neighbors and call this fucking guy Super Dave, like Super Dave Osborne, the old uh, stuntman cartoon character or whatever. You know, just this guy with a white motorcycle helmet that never talked to anybody in the neighborhood, right? Now, I don't know the guy's story, and I don't even know his fucking name, but he was my neighbor for like two years or whatever. But all the guys on my street and all the other families or whatever on my street would say shit like, Oh, well, that guy, you know, he, you know, kitty porn guy, so-and-so, so-and-so, fucking pervert, this, that, kick his ass, so-and-so, so-and-so. And, -so. and uh, this guy, I don't even know, like I say, he's my neighbor. And I, I don't know his name. He never talked to me, never waved at me. I don't fucking know or whatever what's going on with this fellow, right? But there's a lot of guys in this position or whatever. Thankfully, I'm not one of them, even though, although I myself 
am an adult film producer, porn star, actor, webmaster, all that shit, or whatever, you know, but not on the kitty porn tip. So this guy here is just, his life is fucking ruined. So anyway, from, from what I gather, one, once these people are in the sex offender program, they cannot live in a normal neighborhood. There are entire communities in Florida, mostly trailer parks or whatever, full of these like sex offender guys or whatever. And they just can never, ever get integrated back into normal society. You know, they can't get a job. They can't get a normal apartment. They can't, they're just like forever stained. And I guess this shit follows them wherever they go, right? But what about the women? That's what I'm getting to on this show. What about the women? A lot of people are giving women a fucking free pass to this shit. And I'm not just talking about these stories where you hear about the teachers fucking the students and shit like that. This goes on in all types of households, every single one of them almost, you know. And I myself, speaking, speaking from experience, I will admit to being molested as a young preteen child up until I was about almost 12 or 13 years old by my now deceased grandmother and one of my aunts, who's also deceased now, you know. And, you know, you guys might criticize me for saying, oh, well, you're, he's putting, don't put your family business in the streets, this and that, whatever. Well, I'm like, hey, it's my life. It really happened. I'm not making it up. This isn't my imagination. And I'm just wondering, why do women get a free fucking pass to do shit that men can't do? You know, if I were, you know, fucking molesting and fucking little fucking preteen girls they would throw me under a motherfucking prison probably hang me castrate me electric chair you name it you name it there'd be a lynch mob assembled outside of my goddamn house right now right but women could get away with this shit scot-free and it's normalized it's normalized to the point where it's like they can say oh well they're family or they're giving him you know some some there's some kind of love or nurturing angle that women could always fall back on. Women are women play this motherly role, the, the grandmother card, the auntie card, the this card, the that card, to just get away with all types of fuckery or whatever, you know what I'm saying? And I can't, I can't just uh, be quiet about this shit, but there's a lot of guys, a lot of guys, most guys actually are going to be ashamed to even talk about or discuss this kind of thing. And I'm not, I'm already fucking naked on the internet. As you guys know, I got my podcast, my show, you know, I do what I do. I make my movies. I'm semi-fucking retired anyway. I don't work for the crackers, the Jews, the niggers, spicks, flips, Arabs, whatever you want to call them. I don't work for nobody but myself. So I have nobody to answer to, right? So I'm one of these people that can speak freely, you know, and say it's pretty much to say the truth of what actually happened, at least to be. You know what I'm saying? Now, if you guys go look at some of my other previous episodes, I'm always constantly ranting about this one organization that always stalks me for life, right? They're called OJJDP ICAC in Indian Country. It's an acronym that stands for Office of Juvenile Justice and Delinquency Prevention, uh, Internet Crimes Against Children Task Force in Indian Country. And this is a task force that has been following me around for a very long time. They're federally funded. They have hundreds of millions of dollars to basically follow me around the fucking globe to airports, to Dominican Republic, to Thailand, to other countries, and just try to fuck with me on some entrapment tip, all for one reason of a 19-year-old model from New Mexico. And there's plenty of stories and whatever on this all on the, 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 the story, whatever is on my site, Indian Girls, if you guys care to look it up, just Google me or Google my channel and you'll see what I'm talking about. That's not what this show here is about though. My show here is about older women and uh, teenage boys or whatever, or pre-teen, tween, whatever you want to call them or whatever, right? Now, here's my personal experience here, right? I grew up in California and during my summer vacations, my mom would take me to Florida, where my grandma's house was, whatever. And, uh, well, actually, technically, it was my grandfather's house. He was the one that worked all his life. My grandmother actually never worked. That's another side story within itself, you know. But she, she was the mother of 12 or 13 children. And, uh, you know, I had a great grandma or whatever, but, you know, she molested me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I thought that this was normal. 
I thought this was like normal or whatever. It's like, I could give you a situation, right? We're in the house in Florida, grandma's house, small, tiny little box house or whatever. And you know, they'd, they'd be watching the big Humpty Dumpty wooden TV. This is like the 1980s and 1990s and early 90s or whatever, up until I was about 12 or 13 years old. And you know, the living room was so tight, there'd be like six or seven adults in the living room. And every time I would walk by to like squeeze between the couch and the TV or whatever to go into the kitchen or whatever, my auntie, my older auntie, uh, she, she would be sitting on the chair and she would just reach over and grab my dick or my balls or whatever and squeeze them, like rapidly just yoink them. And she had to be at least, I don't know what her age was at the time, but she had to be at least in her 40s or 50s or something, right? So she's fully aware of what she's doing. This isn't like some crazy shit. This is a true story, by the way. So it's like she grabbed my dick almost like close to 100% of the time as I'm walking to go to the kitchen and get a glass of water into the bathroom or whatever. And one of her quotes is she would say, come here, boy, let me pull your, let me pull your wank or wink or whatever in her Southern voice or whatever, right? I'm talking about my black side of the family here, by the way. By the way, I'm half black, half Ethiopian, whatever. Not that tight with my African side of the family. They're mostly on the West Coast or whatever. But this is, this is the Southern black family, right? Southern black family of uh, black women, you know, basically child molesters, for lack of a better word. That's what they would call them today if we were on the news, right? But again, once again, I'm talking about dead people. So when I'm dead, you fuckers can talk about me. You talk about me bad enough as I'm living right now, right? So this is the case here, but my auntie would do this and my grandma would do it too, but she was more subtle with it, right? You know, she, she would like grab my dick or whatever as she's like laying in bed or something, right? And this is like, I wondered why was this like acceptable? <laughs> okay, this is not normal behavior for adults. Now, by the way, my auntie, uh, no boyfriend, not, no, no husband or whatever. And... Uh, uh, she, I, oh, what, what else can I say about her? She, she actually worked at Lockheed Martin in Orlando. Um, they called themselves Martin, Martin Marietta back in the day. So she's, she didn't go to college, but she was highly educated and, uh, you know, hard worker, skilled. And she was one of my aunties that actually gave me gifts growing up. You know, weird. You know, I guess molesters like to give people gifts and shit or whatever. And she actually gave me my very first VHS videotape of uh, G.I. Joe. The episode was called Countdown for Zartan. It's actually one of my favorite, favorite fucking tapes. I've played it like over a thousand times, probably, right? One of my favorite cartoons, right? So, it, and I was like really, really happy when I got this gift as a kid because, you know, like I always had like bootleg fucking videotape cartoons, you know, shit you tape off a of TV with the commercials on it and all that shit. But I actually had, she actually went to, I guess, you know, Costco or something at the time and bought the tape and the tape had the, the the real official box from the store, like with the artwork and the little comic strip on the back or whatever. You know, I was like, I felt really, really special because this was like one of my prized possessions as a kid, right? But yeah, she she was she would play with my dick <laughs> as a kid, right? And this this is this totally blew my mind until I reached adulthood, like this is not normal behavior. Why is a 50, 60 year old woman playing with a teenage or 12, 11, 12, 13 year old boy's dick? This is not normal, okay, what the fuck? And maybe this goes on more often than not in the South and it's probably not talked about for shame reasons, but remember my name's Shimeless, which is very close to shameless just add one or add or delete one or two vowels and you have shameless so i have no shame and that's why i'm talking about this shit here you know as i sit here in my little vacation home or whatever in thailand right now it's like i have time to reflect about my past and just think about all the experiences and events that made me the person i am today right so you know i, I have my auntie tugging on my dick my grandma's tugging on my dick and in the other room, the other room is, by the way, full of other black women in the family and relatives and shit. Basically like a hen house, right? So my point here is that older women, they behave very, very badly when in the company of other women. You know, just like how men will get rowdy in a strip club or whatever when some little 18, 19 year old college girl gets on stage with her little firm titties and starts dancing and doing the splits on the pole. Women are no different. 
And society has trained us to think that women are vastly different than men. You know, and I have to give a shout out to uh, this, this Ronin Man channel, this other podcast or show that I listen to. He points out in one of his later episodes that every woman and every man, you know, we're just 50-50. You are, you are, even though if you were a man listening to this, right, you are 50% woman. You are 50% your mom and 50% your dad or, you know, a pretty close ratio of both, maybe 60, 40, 70, 30, who knows, but, you know, you're not like 90 and 10%. It's pretty, it's a pretty close ratio, 50, 50, 60, 40, something along those lines, right? So that means, that means that women have the same sexual desires and turn-ons or whatever as men, right? Right. It's just society's programming and shaming and indoctrinations are what make us think and perceive things differently, right? Now, I'm not afraid to admit that I like teenage girls, but by law in most countries, you can't fuck with them unless they're 18 plus, right? So that's why most of my videos on the internet, you know, you'll see so many 18 yo. That's what most of my titles say, 18 yo, 18 year old. I, I pur purposely hire 18, 19, 20, 21 year old girls, or at least girls that look like that, you know, with a valid ID and this and that. And by the way, this girl from the Indian task force, they keep running hell about she's nine, She was 19 years old or whatever, but they're treating her like she's fucking 12 or some shit. You would think, you know, forming a fucking lynch mob of niggers and shit to fuck with me. And believe me, since I've broken no laws, you guys are going to catch holy motherfucking hell from me for the rest of my life. You know, when I have time to lob a few missiles at you guys digitally i shall do so and will continue to do so because i've done no wrong right but in the case of this here it's like totally weird why would people overlook so easily the transgressions of women well probably because they're able to give birth right without without women the childbirth process stops or whatever so by that token women or at least fertile women emphasis on fertile are heralded in most cultures and societies for having a privileged status and i can understand why i'm not arguing that fact right because without fertile women pretty much the human race comes to an end so they there there should be i'm not arguing this fact there should be some slightly elevated status same status given to the elderly and pregnant women should in my opinion be given to teenage girls or not even just teenage girls, basically fertile girls from whatever the age of you know, prime of fertility is or whatever the fuck that is. I don't know, 13 through 40 or something. I, I, I don't really know. I'm not a girl. I don't know how, I know some girls have babies in their 40s and shit like that. But I mean, basically when the egg count is the highest, you know, <laughs> it's the only way you could measure it or whatever in a scientific method. You could say that, that, that they should have some sort of elevated status in society, but that does not mean they should totally be exonerated and get off free for fucking fucking everything, right? So my thing here is that older women often do not admit that they are turned on by younger, fitter, more athletic, more virile, higher testosterone having boys young men i should say you know what i'm saying older women like young hard dicks and they don't want to fess up to this fact right but it's true and i, I can prove this just by looking at my own statistics in my channels and in my movies or whatever one of my top selling goddamn movies right now on one of my channels it's uh what's what is this it's it's like some basically some granny porn right I think it was uh, fuck, uh, me, me and Leilani Lay actually did, did like six movies together. And there, there's this one movie called, um, it's called Porno Movie, called Granny Loves BBC in the Kitchen or something like that. We was fucking her in the kitchen on the countertop, right? I think in the video, I'm like her personal trainer guy or some shit in the neighborhood. And she's supposed to be this, this granny, granny type of white woman or whatever, right? But it's a top selling clip because it's interracial, that always sells good, but also because it has this taboo niche or niche of uh, uh, younger, younger man, older woman or whatever going on. And I said, there's got to be something to this. Why in the fuck 
is this clip or this movie or whatever outselling a lot of shit with much more beautiful, hotter, uh, you know, porn star teens, everything. It, it, there's a reason for this, right? And if you if you look on some of the more popular porn channels, you'll see there's a growing trend, a very fast growing trend of uh, videos with older, older, mature women, cougars slash milfs or whatever, fucking around with teenage guys. And the guys are actually trying to portray themselves to be underage guys, like high school students or some shit, you know, little basketball varsity player, football player type of guy or whatever. And this is like a movie role that I've adopted for myself as well, too, because obviously if shit works, I'm going to sell and profit from it. Right. So um, a lot of people, they question me like, you know, why are you working out so hard? Why are you doing this and that? How come you don't do weights? How come your arms are so small? You know, you niggers don't realize there's a method to everything that I do. You know, niggers don't believe fat meat is greasy or whatever. Right. So since I'm lever I'm just leveraging my strengths, being that I'm a short guy. I'm a small guy, which basically means that I look younger than I actually am. Most people don't believe I look 40 years old, so I'm going to capitalize on that. I'm going to I'm not going to have an old man gray beard. OK, I'm going to put on a little fuck. I'm going to shave myself, put on put on a fucking little baseball cap or some fucking teenage thuggy ass looking clothes or some shit when I make my movies so that I could play the role of this little fucking high school kid uh, that gets, you know, seduced by this milf, milf cougar type of woman or whatever in her, in her home or whatever. And I think this is a very, very big fantasy for a lot of older women. And they can't, they can't ever admit to it or fess up to it, but I know it's the motherfucking truth, you know? Uh, I, I, I posted a few posts on Reddit about this. Um, I was doing some... Uh, some of my actual like progress pictures because I used to be very fat before. I used to be over 300 pounds and now I am, uh, what the fuck? I'm like, uh, what the fuck did I last weigh myself at? at? The lowest I weighed myself at recently is 159 pounds. Uh, I think I'm about floating at 164, 165 now, now that I'm enjoying my pad thai noodles and you know, whatever. You gotta enjoy life a little bit. I'm having a little bit too much coconut ice cream and all kinds of good shit, but you know, all the fucking here burns off the fat like nothing. So I'm still doing my, my running, car hit cardio, intermittent fasting, special fucking tea diets, BCAA powder, vitamins, all kinds of crazy shit. And uh, I, I eat eight pounds of bananas per day and shakes and kale and ginger and all kinds of shit. And it, it, it all affects my health in a positive manner. It helps me to look, feel and perform younger, right? But yeah, okay, getting back to my topic, um, my, my, my family, my, my black side of the family, my aunties and grandma or whatever, just playing with my dick or whatever as a kid, I, I, I thought like, whoa, what the fuck? Is this normal? You know, and this happened to some of my other cousins as well too. You know, so I, I imagine this, this is a common thing in the South or it's at least common in my household. I, I don't want to believe that my family is solely perverts because I truly believe that women and men are almost the same, meaning they have the same desires, the same passions, the same motivations, the same lusts for power, domination, control, uh, you know, money, money, sex, et cetera, et cetera. You know, just, just because someone is born female doesn't exempt them from wanting to have you know, a motherfucking a BMW, a house, a fucking this, a that, a husband, a wife, a this, a boyfriend, girlfriend, you know, Dorito chips. Who the fuck cares? You know, it's like we kind of really want the same thing, really. I just nobody wants to fucking fess up to it. You know, girls play this game or they're instructed or indoctrinated to play this game of like, you know, it's my pussy. You can't have it. Ha ha ha. When in reality, girls like to fuck too. You can't tell me otherwise. You know, I, I got, <laughs> I'm in over a thousand fucking movies. Prove me wrong. You know, girls love to fuck. They love to fuck probably more so than guys. They just can't socially, it's not socially acceptable in most circles of society to go and uh, talk about it. I think that's kind of fucked up, you know, because girls get shamed for the same shit guys don't get shamed for. But by that same token, guys get in a whole fuckload, truckload, 
fuck ton of trouble for doing the same shit that girls can get off the hook for scot-free. Just look in your paper or look in your internet news about all the goddamn school teachers that actually finally, finally due to like text messaging and little snitching ass boys or whatever that finally, finally fess up to fucking their teachers or whatever. You, you hear about it in all these uh, things here. Think about the stories you don't hear about, right? Of all the 13, 14 year olds that are fucking their high school teachers or whatever and this and that and whatever, you know? It never ever gets discussed because of cell phone records and whatever. They didn't have cell phones when I was a fucking kid. There was no text messages, no Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook. There, there was no digital trail of all this fuckery to follow up with, but now there is, right? So it is what it is, you know? And I really, really do think it is totally fucked up that there are law enforcement agencies around that are pretending to be underage girls doing stings, so-called stings, on guys on the internet. What the fuck? Why are they not pretending to be underage boys and trying to sting and entrap women? Why the fuck not? Show me a case or two or three or four or 400 where women are prosecuted for talking dirty or sending titty your titty pussy pictures to boys. This shit ain't gonna happen, right? You know, it's, it's, it's like, why, why, why? Why is the bait always a little teenage girl? Oh, you wanna come over to my house and see my little pussy? And, rah, 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 rah. and you know, po you know, uh, you post a message like this on Craigslist and instantly 600 horny motherfucking guys are gonna respond to it, right? You know, it's a, t it's a total honeypot trap because the system is designed to entrap men. Men are utilities. Men are pretty much conditioned to work to work for the system, to work for women, work for society, work for the government, and fuel this goddamn tax machine, right? The prison industrial complex, the law enforcement fucking complex, all these agencies that are fucking with me and other men around the world, you know? You guys, I'm, I'm speaking up for a lot of guys here, right? You know, I, I'm in a third world, so-called third world country, you're living like a fucking prince. And I can freely do this because, like I say, again, I don't work for you motherfuckers, nor do I desire to. And I have enough common goddamn sense and decency to speak up when I see something wrong going on. I'm already naked on the Internet. I already have a task force after me for quite some time and they can't do shit to me. So, you know, <clears throat> what the fuck? Someone's got to speak up. It may as well be me. Mr. Shimmy. Shimmy Cash. Shimmy XXX dot com etc etc the jimmy show.com spamming myself here buy my movies i want your money honey but for real on the real this this is a very very serious issue there are men in prison right now doing time doing decades for having goddamn photos of bitches they never even seen who are probably not even real <clears throat> you know what i'm saying on their goddamn phone or laptop or some shit like that now i'm smart enough to know what 18 usc 2257 is I'm smart enough to have photo IDs and video evidence and behind the scenes footage and model releases and signed contracts to cover my motherfucking ass when I make my movies because I know how devious motherfucking bitches are. And I know how devious they can be when they try to change their story in hindsight and all that shit. That's why we have video, you know? So this whole thing is a farce to me, man. I, I, I just, I just don't. I don't approve of women getting off scot-free when men do not, you know? I don't approve of myself of being molested as a child or whatever, you know, as a teen, you know? I, I sometimes wonder to myself, well, you know, if, my, if I'm in the house and my mom's in the other room, mom, what are you doing while your mom is molesting me? What the fuck? This is very strange. What are you doing, mom, while, my, while your older sister is molesting me? Why are you sitting there passively? Like, you don't know what's going on. Like, you think I'm not going to remember shit from when I'm like 10 years old, but I do. You know, I never forget a goddamn thing. So, you know, uh, this shit is like, uh, I haven't like suppressed or repressed it. It's just that it's just not, hasn't really been important or I haven't really had an opportunity or a, uh, or a triggering platform that I could actually freely talk about this on. So 
if you were a guy out there and you've been molested by your family, friends, motherfucking this church Bible group, Boy Scouts, not in my case, that hasn't been the case or whatever. But by the way, if you did go to church, chances are you probably got molested by the fucking scout master, church master, all the fucking gay guys in the fucking choir. Not that there's anything wrong with gay people, but I'm just saying, hey, um, leave the fucking kids out of that shit, right? So, I mean, you have to question any organization that's like, you know, basically 95 to 98% women. If you're a guy and everyone around you is, you know, 98% women, and they're all older than you in positions of perceived authority and power over you, um, yeah, there's a very good chance you're going to get molested, <laughs> okay? You don't have a voice, nobody's going to believe you, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So if, you, if you're one of these guys in this position, say something. Speak up, leave it a blow in the comments, right? I'll, I'll go even a little deeper down the rabbit hole here. I'm going to start naming some motherfucking names here. This goes out to Dorian A. Peters, California Bar ID number 261863, who is now a law enforcement officer in California, according to his LinkedIn profile. There's a whole lot of shows about this nigger here, boy. This is the guy that worked on behalf of Rhina and the OJJDP ICAC in Indian country entrapment force. This guy, I befriended him. You know, I invited him to my apartment. He follows me, stalks me at a dollar store in California over this Indian girl who's 19, right? Reiterating the story once again for the hundredth time. Comes to my house in Dominican Republic, you know, for whatever reason to dig up dirt on me and try to send me to the motherfucking slammer or some shit over this bitch. This lying ass Navajo bitch from New Mexico, Reina, who's on IndianGirls.com. Look at that story too. You know, might as well profit from it too, you know. So this nigga here, dog, Mr. Mr. Human Trafficking Task Force, <laughs> black as fucking tar with eczema, emailing me nigger, nigger, nigger all the time, even though I'm an East African and got that much nigger in my blood like him, you know, black as tar nigger saying nigger. This guy here, um, tell me, sir, how are you doing today? <laughs> Working for the goddamn white man. You still have a million pesos, like on that ATM slip, like you showed me in Dominican Republic? <laughs> I love rubbing shit in niggers' faces, boy. Eat shit and die, nigger. <laughs> this is what you can do. When you, I, I encourage all of you guys to work for yourself. Always work for yourself. That way you don't have any recourse. You know, people don't have no... You can't get me fired, motherfucker. The worst y'all can do is ban my goddamn channel and keep following me around airports and shit and keep fucking with me. But believe me, <laughs> retaliation is a motherfucker. It is a real bitch. And I'm an East African that's a vengeful motherfucking pirate on the Gulf of Aden. So as other niggers want to have S500 Benzes with rims, I want to jack the whole fucking oil tanker. Okay, you're fucking with the East African pirate who just lives for fucking vengeance. So swallow that, motherfuckers. All right, this is the motherfucking Shemmy Show. Buy my movies, I want show money. I'm going to continue this on a part two. All right, peace and hair grease. And uh, I've done enough talking for now. So you guys leave some comments below if you like. And I will continue on this in part two when I get some more feedback. Peace and hair grease. Out of here.